Hola, 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 hola a todos. Hola. Hi, hi, everybody. ¿Pueden escucharme? Can you hear me? My voice is okay for you. Mi voz es clara para ustedes. Muy bien, excelente. Bien, entonces eh, voy a empezar. I am going to start, okay? Uh, well, hi, hi everybody. Uh, this is Eugenia Calderón. I am going to offer you a, a small lecture uh, in my participation in the SL MOOC 16. Welcome all of you, and uh, I hope you enjoy this presentation. This is part of our activities in um, Second Life and in the World. My my presentation is going to be. I am going to talk about uh, my activities in Second Life and in the World. The first part of the this presentation will be my lecture. And the second part, uh, we are going to enjoy a tour uh, with my my business partner, the Professor James H. Abraham. Uh, and I hope well you you enjoy this activity. This is part of the SL MOOC 16. Okay, let me start. Let me start with my presentation. Uh, first, I am going to talk about my activities in uh, my classes in DigiWorld and Second Life. As you can see on the board in front of you, I am going to show you some uh, slides, some images, and I am going to talk about that. Okay, the first, uh, the, my lecture is Virtual Worlds as a Tool for Spanish Teaching. And I am going to talk about my project in Second Life, Spanish with Eugenia, and Spanish language learning at Escape here in the UR. Uh, let me start with, uh, okay, we have a list of topics. I am going to talk about these topics. Um, first, my project, Spanish with Eugenia. Uh, in second place, uh, about the Spanish language lear Spanish language learning at scale. I am going to answer this question: Why Second Life in and why Second Life and Digi Worlds? Uh, if it is possible to recreate a class in virtual worlds, I am going to talk very fast about the tools we can use in in uh, in these virtual worlds. And a little more topics, uh, other tools uh, like social networks and video. Um, uh, talk about organization of artistic and cultural activities. Uh, the theory workshop, one of my specific class, and some collaborative action. And at the end, well, a summary, a summary of the presentation. Okay, let me start with my project. I am Spanish teacher. Mm -hmm. in real life and in virtual worlds also. And I have a, a project in Second Life. The project is Spanish with Eugenia. As you can see on the board, the, this is my place in Second Life. Uh, well, you have visited, or if you have the opportunity, visit uh, this place, Spanish with Eugenia. In Spanish with Eugenia, we have the main plaza, as in the picture, the uh, material for the classes, the cultural plaza, the schedule, and the classroom. Uh, I teach. I teach in Second Life, and uh, I have this uh, this theme to teach. In that theme, a student can get uh, some information about my classes. Uh, there is uh, in the cultural plaza. There is um, always there is uh, an exhibition in, in Spanish, of course, because it's part of our practice. They're reading in Spanish. Uh, my schedule is oh, is uh, there also. Um, why? Because th this is my activity, my professional work. So I. I uh, advertise, yeah, I advertise my, my classes. Uh, so I, if a student 
uh, can get some information about my activities, my classes, well, they can get uh, that information in this place. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is my my place in Second Life. That is the way I use Second Life. Uh, remember, the, the idea of this, this mock is to to show the way we use virtual worlds okay we teacher we educator this is the way we use virtual worlds to teach and in this case to teach spanish uh, next next slide we can see some images about spanish language language learning at scale we are here in in scale this is a special project created by by Professor James. Uh, later, he is going to offer us a guided tour, so we can enjoy this this tour. But let me show some of the pictures of this place. Uh, we have the main plaza. Uh, you, if you arrive here, you are going to arrive in that place in the main plaza. There is a um, uh, information kiosk when you can get information about this project. Uh, this project is Spanish language, language learning, learning at scale, is a project to practice Spanish. And so you can start, well, let me say this, you can start Spanish classes with me, and later we can come here to practice Spanish. There are some, some activities, several activities to, to practice numbers, uh, tenses, um, dialogues in Spanish. Well, uh, Professor James um, can explain more about when uh, when we take the, the tour, okay? Um, there are some, all, all this place, Spanish language learning at scale is designed to help students to write Spanish. But not, not only students, teachers also. Teachers can come and uh, create an account and uh, observe, evaluate the, yeah, exactly, in that, in that link, that um, professor teachers can come and evaluate their student because there, there is a, a, how can I say, a script designed to help students to do that. Okay, but later, later, Professor James uh, is going to, to talk about that. Let me continue. Next, next slide. Um, why I have this question? Why virtual worlds? Why we use uh, Second Life and and Digi Worlds? Me specifically. Well, because we can create a, an education environment. Mm -hmm. We can have um, classrooms and we can, uh, like we do, uh, we Spanish teacher, well, language teacher, we use not only the, the class or the information or just the material, no. We, we uh, make more interesting the class or we use other tools to, to teach. I mean, um, visit visiting uh, interesting places, cultural places, doing um, artistic activities, cultural activities. Uh, we can uh, play, role play games. Um, and that way, well, we could do that uh, Second Life and Digi World, well, we can use that. That, that is the reason. We, we can recreate the, the real life in the virtual world. We have a classroom, like we see on the picture, classroom, and uh, we can see a, a movie in Spanish, of course. Um, I can give some cultural lectures or give some classes for free classes for, for students. Uh, student uh, logging in the virtual worlds, and I log, of course, and we work together using virtual worlds. So that is the reason we use virtual worlds, okay? This is a good way to teach, a good way to teach Spanish. Um, let me continue with the slide. Um, 
I have this question, is it, is it possible to recreate a class in Second Life? Well, yes, yes, it is possible. Uh, but not only in a classroom, okay, like I said, not only in a classroom. Of course, we have a classroom, and in Second Life, I have, I have some classroom. Uh, here, well, in the, here in, in Escape, not necessarily a classroom, we, we, made, we make other kind of activities, more uh, not only role play, we have exercises to do, uh, we have a hut uh, which led us to use this word, and, and, and that way we recreate not only, a, how can I say, a former class. Uh, like I said, we visit places, we organize um, cultural activities, and uh, we we get something very important in virtual worlds, the immersion environment. Yeah, uh, when we Second Life and did you well, specifically Second Life, well, all the virtual worlds are games, right? We consider that like, like games, but that game playing, yeah, doing that kind of games. Well, we can uh, learn learn not only uh, building uh, classes or or how to create something in um, models or, or textures to, to the virtual worlds. No, we can work here inside virtual worlds to teach. I use, I use Second Life and now I am starting using Escape for my classes. Uh, I get that immersion. Uh, we go inside the world. We well, we are here in our desk and in front of our screens, our computers. But when we are in a class, we are in inside the world. We are. We get that immersion in inside the world. So uh, that is the reason we we can create a, a class in in virtual worlds. Uh, let me talk about more about how to use, how I said a tool, virtual worlds, like a tool for Spanish teaching. Well, yeah, uh, there are some interesting tools. Uh, what kind of tools? Well, we can use our avatars or virtual books or the screen and whiteboards. Uh, the animations, gestures and animation is important, are important tools. Note cards and uh, the, the, the words, the, the buildings, construction, all of that add, are tools to Spanish to teach. Uh, for example, here in the, in, on the board, you can see a note card. That note, uh, I use note cards not only to send messages to my students. No, we do our homeworks. Yes, in my classes, I, uh, ask for homeworks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my students have to work. Um, they, I ask them to do some uh, uh, exercises. In, in our books, uh, as you can see on the board, I use that kind of books, our virtual books. Inside that books, we have the information of the class, the material, the topic, uh, the topic, the grammar information, and some exercises. That exercises, are written in note cards, so students can write their Spanish, practice their writing Spanish in the note card, and that way I check, I check the uh, the evolution of my student. I see if they have learned the the topic I I teach. So uh, are important for the class. But let me talk a little more about avatars avatars, uh, how we can use avatar like a tool. Um, and next, next slide. Yes, it is important uh, to use avatars. That avatars, uh, the, the scenarios, yeah, the places and avatars gave us the immersion. So we, we use them to, to, to get the educational environment. But avatars are important. How or why? Because they play a major role in the process of teaching. How? Uh, we are, I am the teacher, they are the student, 
and we play inside the virtual worlds. Um, yeah, we play uh, the the role of student and the teacher, but also we we we, we become okay uh, that avatars. But that avatars are also the how can I say the the protection <laughs> of us or our real life and uh, first we can have that contact okay that that sense of presence inside a, a classroom inside a, an environment and also they it is a protection of our student i mean they feel more comfortable okay they if they have a mistake well it doesn't matter the not me not i am not the guilty i am not the 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 person who, who has the mistake no is the avatar who has the mistake so that way students feel more comfortable the the nervousness is decreased uh, as you can see on the picture i have well, i am with my student in the classroom we in the other picture we were celebrating the christmas with with other friends uh, in the middle we we are performing a play and uh, on the down um, in front of the text yeah we have a uh, another play we were performing another play if that is in our theater workshop in our theater workshop we practice spanish also it is funny and we practice and that is a good way to to learn to have that uh, process of teaching okay uh let me change talking about the the nervousness okay uh well here uh, the avatar in virtual worlds avatar play different roles so we can um, feel different uh, feeling or different scenarios and that is another way to to teach the to use this is a good tool to teach in this case spanish okay so that uh, that is the reason avatars are very important uh let me continue um like i said avatars help to reduce student anxiety yes uh, they they work with more confidence it doesn't matter if, the, if they have a, a mistake well if, if we have a mistake no well not not us they they have the mistake so that is the reason uh, it is good a good tool to, to teach languages uh, the avatars the avatars are a good tool to teach mm -hmm. Here, same in this in these um, pictures, we I wrote a mistake. Yo soy hablando español. Well, that is a mistake, but doesn't matter. Well, I correct. I can write in local chat or repeat, like I like I am speaking right now. In class, I speak also. They can hear my voice uh, speaking. Uh, they can hear other uh, Spanish speakers speaking, so that way they practice also the listening comprehension, and they can correct that kind of mistake. Uh, so, but don't 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 worry. Okay? Or we we are not worried. Uh, not us. Not that the uh, if I can say the the um, not too much intelligent. Well, not exactly. Well, we use our avatars to practice, to talk, to perform, and to have mistakes. So not us, are them. <laughs> okay, we are in a class also. Avatars participate in the class. This is a class in, in, on the top, on the picture on the top. We are in, in a class. Uh, in the text in front, in the picture in front of the text, we have a, a, a play also. Plays are uh, other way to to practice to to have kind of conversation. Students um, read the scripts and they can speak and and it is funny because they move their avatars. We have mistakes. Well, avatars have mistakes, not us. Uh, but doesn't matter. This is it, it is funny if we teach 
playing well, we play, it's good. It's, it's good to, to, to our uh, learning. Uh, in the other picture, me and my, uh, my student Lisa, we were practicing some um, the vocabulary at the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, funny phrases and correct grammar. But we were there. In that picture, we, we were at the Mi Casa Es Su Casa Sim. My house is your house Sim. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> Maggie, Maggie Larry Moore have particip has participated in, a, in a my place and it is very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, we, we um, Professor James and me, we have places in Second Life and in, well, in the world. Uh, my place, Spanish, Spanish with Eugenia, is my place. And uh, Professor James uh, has Mi Casa Es Su Casa Sim. My house is your house Sim. And here in, in Escape, we are working together to uh, give student a good way to practice Spanish. Okay, we'll see. We'll see a little more about that. Uh, let me continue. Uh, screen, we have more tools. We were talking about tools. A virtual world, like a tool for Spanish teaching. Yeah, we have tools, more and more tools, not only uh, to, yeah, it is very, very good. Yeah, Mi Casa Su Casa is a good, very good, good place. I, I confess, I use a lot Mi Casa Su Casa. Mm -hmm. Professor James let me use uh, his sim and I work very, very good with my student. Um, uh, okay, screen and whiteboards. How I say that is a good tool? Well, because yeah, we can use that, that boards like I'm doing right now. If you can see, I am using a board, I am changing the slide, you can see the images, but not only to, to show you some material. We can see uh, some movies in Second Life or here, or also here in the world. Uh, in, a, in a screen, we can see videos of YouTube. So we can connect, okay? We, we can connect the, the virtual worlds with, with other tools, um, YouTube or other uh, video player uh, in internet. Uh, we can um, give information the, the student can touch or person who are interested in the classes can touch the screen and get some, some information. So that way, uh, the not necessary. We don't. We it is not necessary to be here. We not necessary. We are here. They can get the information in the boards. Also, uh, some boards have um, a slideshows. Mm -hmm. They uh, giving some information about activities, about events. Uh, and that way, students can follow the information or can practice. They they can t t um, how can I say it? touch. They can touch the boards and change the slide and see the information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that that is uh, another tool: screens and whiteboards in virtual worlds. Uh, what else? Um, gesture and animation. Very very interesting. Uh, here we have, um, uh, oh, well, I can say that Second Life is uh, or has more, a little more tools, is the best uh, virtual world. But, well, we are creating here in, uh, in Scape uh, some activities to gestures, movement, to practice, okay, to get that, that um, educational environment. But well, let me talk about the those gestures we can use. Uh, for example, if we are talking about uh, feelings, studying uh, a specific topic, using uh, feelings the way we are, for example, or what are we doing in a class, practicing present progressive or present tense, or a specific verbs, hard verbs in Spanish, 
Well, we use gestures and animation. If we are, uh, I don't know, uh, practicing verbs, we we dance. Okay, we we dance. We we walk. We uh, jump or we work. We sleep. All in the animator in virtual worlds have created that. Well, that animation to have fun, right? To, to fun. But we as teacher, we can use that animation to work, to teach. Mm -hmm. And uh, gestures of faces, uh, we can show or we can talk about be sad or be happy or be excited or be be bored. Yeah, we can use that gesture. We, we move our faces and say something about that feelings. And that way we can uh, we can practice yeah our language uh, animation in in object in furnitures that is very 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 funny and very very good to teach I use that if I don't have a specific animation in my sim or or in in other educational sim but don't it doesn't matter I can go to a to a store a furniture store or um, a decoration store, and I get a lot of uh, animation to, to work with my student. Uh, be sleeping, be taking a shower in a bathroom, or, or swimming in a, in a swimming pool, or uh, flying an airplane. All that animation help for the class, of course. Um, most of the information is is in English, but I help my student with translate. I can write some material to help my student. It doesn't matter if the information, the info of the object is in English. We uh, use them. We well, we can translate, yeah, that information and talk about that. And if I ask my student to do something. In Spanish, of course, they know which uh, animation can use. Okay, in virtual worlds, so that is the the reason gesture and animation are very important. Um, little more um, scenarios, uh, building uh, copies of scenarios of worlds. Yes, uh, well, here we have some picture about educational uh, themes specifically. But uh, we can use all kind of themes, all kind of places. Um, talking about history, for example, uh, we can use a uh, uh, Egyptian region or an Italian or or England English region. Doesn't matter. We can use all of that. But here in in our information in my slide, we have some uh, educational places specifically. The first one, Spanish speak. Uh, uh, in Spanish speak, Spanish speak, you people can go and talk with the Spanish speakers. We can, you can practice your conversation. In, in Spanish speak, they have um, a, a program to help students to to have partners to, for practice. You can visit that that place. Mi casa es su casa is another place in Second Life. Oh, well, Spanish speak is in Second Life. Mi casa es su casa is in Second Life also. Machu Picchu also in Second Life. Uh, Spanish with Eugenia, um, I create a pyramid, like some pyramids here in my state in real life in, in Mexico. My place, uh, Spanish with Eugenia. And uh, here in SK, uh, Professor James ha ha has created the Amayan Pyramid. Uh, that um, I mean, uh, we builders create uh, Latin places, specific places, uh, which are in real life. Okay? Spanish speak always have a different uh, buildings about cultural places in Mexico, and um, here we have a Mayan pyramid. Uh, in mi casa es su casa is a town. A building like a Mexican town, mi San Miguel de Allende. So you can see that kind of architecture in Latin places. Okay, not only in 
other places. But but we can use all of them to do, teach, to practice, to talk about different topics. We can visit all places. Well, I I think I think I have another life to visit all the places <laughs> in second life, and in the other worlds, it's a very big, very very big places. Well, we have material. We have material to teach to to work our class. Oh, very fast. Let me talk very fast. Uh, other tools we use uh, wikis, Facebook. Uh, you uh, student can get the information of, of your daily classes in uh, the specific um, blog of Professor James, Scape. In Scape, you can get uh, the exercises to practice, the, the activities uh, are here in, in SIM, etc. In my social networks, well, you, I use my social network to connect my students. Uh, let me continue. In uh, I talk about cultural and music uh, artistic activities. Yes, all of that uh, uh, help us to practice the language. Uh, for example, in Spanish speak, they have created the Day of the Dead and celebrate that uh, tradition in Mexico. Their Mexican Revolution. Uh, here in Escape, also we have uh, celebrated the independence in Mexico in a different uh, time, of course. Um, we we have uh, that kind of cultural activities also in Second Life and also in Escape, and we are uh, improve that activities in Escape. Okay? In the future, is a project we are working. Um, next slide. Um, Cultural activities, well, we have here a little more information about cultural activities, Day of the Dead in Spanish speak, uh, Christmas time, yeah, we talk about Christmas time, also, of course, in Spanish, uh, International Women's Day, I continue, I offer uh, frequently some um, lectures about uh, that kind of activities, in Spanish, of course, to help my students to practice the listening comprehension. Um, music, yeah, we can see here some music. Music also, of course, we organize musical uh, activities in Spanish, all of that, to help students to to practice Spanish. Okay. Also, we can visit some places like Tropicana. In Tropicana are uh, Spanish speakers, uh, DJs, uh, music in Spanish. Well, we have fun. We enjoy. We dance with our friends, and we practice. Next slide, let me continue. Theater workshop. I, I was talking about that. This is a, a specific activity we use in my, in Spanish with Eugenia. Uh, here we have some pictures about the place we are we, we performed in the past. Maggie, Maggie Larimore is one of my students have, uh, who has participated. Yeah, in the red dress, <laughs> in the, the, the red dress, that is Maggie. <laughs> um, also, I have seen here uh, Johannes Nemeth. Johannes, nice to see you here. Um, Johannes also have participated, Mag, well, all of my students have participated in the races. It's very funny. So when I have a play, well, we are organizing a play right now. Uh, later, we can send some information about that. You can see what happened in that place. It is very funny. And um, collaborative action. Well, I th I think I, it is better to say abuse action. <laughs> I mean, I use the the theme of my friends in virtual worlds to, of course, of course, you know, yeah, of course, uh, we um, we visit uh, the Latin places to practice Spanish, okay? They have activities, music and concerts, and I, or if I have the opportunity and my student can, we visit that places, okay? All, all of that activity to practice, to read the chat in Spanish, to hear the music. Uh, so yeah, virtual worlds, we can use them to practice. They are a good tool to teach. And uh, well, to finish this presentation, sorry, I'm 
give me just one minute. Uh, a summary. Well, yeah, virtual worlds are good tool to teach, mm -hmm. but we have some problems. Mm -hmm. Technical issue, poor internet connection. Um, uh, some people see Second Life and Digi World like a games, uh, but and the difference in time zone. Well, that can give some problems to to offer our classes, but it doesn't matter. We can fix that. Uh, we can, uh, if different time zone, well, I'm, I'm flexible, I know the, the, the internet, well, and we, um, I can move my activities to help my students, okay? And uh, technical issues, well, the, the technology is advancing very, very fast. And uh, with the time, it, it is cheaper. So yeah, we can get it. We can get. Uh, we can fix that kind of problems, and we can take our classes. And I can teach the classes. So, well, if we have that kind of issues, but we can fix them soon. Well, with this, uh, let me finish my presentation, and let me give the the turn to my uh, to Professor James. He is going to give us a tour. Professor, uh, I finished my presentation. Maggie, I close the voice. Okay. Professor, it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you, Eugenia. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me okay? Hello. Can everyone hear me? Great. Very good. Great presentation, Eugenia. I think we're all on board with the value of virtual worlds for teaching and education. I think you're preaching to the choir and have shown the strength of it. Uh, I think what I want to talk about is a little bit of what we're trying to accomplish here at Escape specifically. And maybe we won't go around and click on everything, but we can certainly walk around at some point because I think with the crowd, it's hard. Everything's geared to be one person controlled kind of. So if one person clicks on something, they're the only one that's going to get the menu. But we can talk a little bit about what we're trying to accomplish. Working with Eugenia, we kind of have two different audiences. My audience is a university class, so I have 24 students that I've been bringing into the virtual world since 2007. And Eugenia is more of a private teacher at an institute in Mexico. So she has individual students, small groups, and an individual plan. And I think what we want to accomplish here is something that works for both types of students, somebody that has a definite class and someone who is a private instructor and wants to lead students through. And then kind of our third audience is just someone who wants to learn Spanish on their own. And so we've tried to accomplish all those things, serve all those audiences here at Escape. So there are things that you can do with a class. There are things that you can do with just a teacher one on one. Or there are things that you can do here by yourself, just if you wanted to learn Spanish. So you can see we have all the different locations, and I put that link in there. I added a couple more today that I've been working on. And so that's, on one level, just a role play place. We want to keep it looking similar enough to a real place in a Spanish-speaking country that students kind of have a sense of believability. They're going to accept that. They're going to suspend disbelief and really have that sense of immersion that they're in that place. So it sets up that role playing environment. We don't want to have too many tools hanging around that makes that takes them out of that. So we try to create something that's close enough to reality that they can get there psychologically and they can pretend that they're in that place. We're never going to get there 100%, but even in a classroom, you're not going to be there 100% role playing or even role playing in a class in Mexico, you're not going to be there 100%. We're trying to get as close as we can to authentic uh, language learning as we can, or actually employing the language authentic assessment. So we have all the different locations. You can see those. Within each of those locations, we have several different levels of interaction. At one level, we want to encourage vocabulary acquisition. So we have all the titles, all the objects will be titled. So if you went into the classroom, you could just click on a link and you would see that all the different objects have a, a title floating over them. And so if you compare that to a textbook, that's like the 
vocabulary list at the end of the chapter. So students could go look at their textbook and see these, or they could come in escape and see actual objects and walk around and see what those objects might look like in a Spanish-speaking environment. The next step that we have is for audio. So in most Spanish language programs, you get to hear audio of the different objects. We've put audio into each of the objects, and so you can click on them and hear that audio pronounced and then repeat, so you get the practice repeating the, the uh, verbal practice. And one thing that I learned early in Mikasa was, well, what if you have 10 students in here all at the same time clicking on something? Uh, they're all gonna be hearing each other's clicks or the object that they click on. So quickly, uh, I developed a HUD, so each learner has an individual learning experience. So only they're going to hear the words that they click on. And that HUD's going to be more important down the line as, as we keep going. So there we have the acquisition phase of language learning. The next phase that each of the areas will have is a practice activity. And actually, there'll be two or three act practice activities. What we want you to be able to do is to recognize the words. So most of the language, most of the locations will have a place where you'll hear the word and you have to go click on it. And it, maybe it'll even be written in the text chat. So you'll see it, you'll hear it, and then you'll have to go recognize it and click on it. The next level would be where you have to just hear it. So you just totally by hearing the word have to go click on it. And the final level for practice would be the producing the word. So the word, the object might light up or be made bold or flash or something, and the student actually has to write the word for that object in text chat to be recognized. Ideally, maybe down the line, we'll have voice recognition in virtual worlds, so the student would actually have to say the word to produce it, and you know, the voice recognition could set a uh, standard, so if you're, it's 80% correct, you'd get credit. I think that would be a huge uh, addition to virtual worlds to have voice recognition. So that's the second stage would be the practicing. And students in here in Escape earn XP points. So in a lot of game, uh, video games, you earn XP points by completing missions and doing little uh, chores or little tasks. So we have XP points and that'll be employed down the line. Maybe the instructor will have you get, okay, after you earn 30 XP points, you'll get a new t-shirt or you can go to the store and you can buy some new clothes. You know, that's further down the road for integration into Escape, but that's one of our plans is to have a more game-like environment where you're earning, you're working to earn points. The students are earning points, and then they can turn that in for digital goods or for their grade. You know, maybe the grade is, in this class, you have to get 1,000 XP points. That tells me that you've really done the work, and you'll get a good grade in the class. So for the practice you're working for XP points, the third step, stage is an actual assessment. So here you're actually going for 100% correct response to the vocabulary, both recognizing and producing. So one assessment will be recognizing, it'll say the word and you have to click on it. And then you have to get all the items correct to get uh, credit. My philosophy here in Escape is mastery education. So instead of just getting an 80%, you have to get 100%. That tells me that I know every, you know everything, or the student knows everything. So they have truly mastered the classroom vocabulary, or the hotel vocabulary, or the sporting goods store vocabulary. You know, so down the road, they don't never, they never learn the word for our desk in Spanish. That's just not possible. That's not an option. They need to know everything right from the very beginning. And so the assessment, the final level, is that mastery where they have to both produce and recognize all of the items. And then all of these results are scored into a database. So the XP points are uh, totaled and kept in, an, in a database file. And then the assessments are stored. The date that the student completes the assessment is stored into a database. So instructors can pull that information up and see, and the students themselves, too, can see if they've completed things. One of our goals is to kind of make a whole program here. So putting all of these activities in a logical order and progressing students through that material so they come out with a basic and obviously eventually an intermediate and advanced level of language learning. 
that's kind of a big picture goal that you know Hanny and I are still working on to exactly figure out. So, you know, we're making little steps to it, putting things in order. At this point, I'm creating a lot of content for the vocabulary side of it. There are a few uh, grammar side things that I brought in from Mikasa or worked on here that will be there, but it's gonna build out totally. So you'll cover every single topic that's covered in a basic Spanish course, probably into intermediate level too. Uh, the great thing about coming into OpenSim, I have not missed Second Life one second. I think that OpenSim is a much stronger platform, much more workable for me. My colleague at my school where I teach, she teaches interpersonal communication. So she needs the, uh, the, the members, she needs the audience, she needs to go out and talk to a lot of different people. So she likes Second Life from that standpoint, it has a lot more users. For what I'm working on, it's more of a self-contained learning environment, although the field trips are great. But OpenSim is having the hypergrid. So when Todi gets his sim done, whoever else is working on Spanish language sims, we'll be able to go hop over there and visit them and have those multi-user experiences and talk to real life Spanish speakers. That's down the road. The thing that I've really enjoyed working with here in OpenSim is the uh, non-playing characters, the bots. They're much easier to work with in OpenSim. I can actually program them. I can make them look like any avatar. So I can clone my avatar. Eugenia could click on something and it would clone her avatar. So, and then you can script it just like an object. So it can move around, it can talk, it can give things, it can do animations. It can do all the things you need to do. So I don't know if you remember from Mikasa, the restaurant robots were pretty stale. They were pretty stagnant. If you get a chance, we've been having a little bit of issue with the uh, waitress in the cafe. After we're done here, if you get a chance, one by one, I wouldn't go in there with too many people, uh, she'll attend you and what happens is you walk in and it's she senses that you're there. She greets you with a dialogue. So a little dialogue will pop up on your script. And then she'll move over to one of the chairs and she'll ask you to sit down and she'll interact with you. If you don't want to sit down, she'll ask you a couple of times and then she'll just say, okay, I guess you don't want to eat. See you later and reset. But then once you sit down, she starts going through a typical restaurant dialogue and she actually brings you the objects. The objects appear on your table. And then at the end, she'll actually figure out your bill and give you the cuenta so you'll see your charge and then she'll ask you if you want to leave a tip or not so it's kind of fun you can do a lot of advanced dialogues and there again working if we had voice recognition right now we have to work through text but once we get voice recognition then a student would work through that all in text and i could instead of having them pick from four choices <laughs> yep, you have to pay the, the bill with XP points. So if you don't have an XP points, you're cleaning dishes. So, and I just did the airport. So I just finished the airport uh, content and I put three NPCs in there. So there's an airline agent, there's the customs agent, and there's the flight attendant. So as you move through, as the student moves through, each one of them could ask them questions grade the student and then tell them to go on to the next stage. So you can really work through those dialogues and create a near authentic assessment. It's still a little canned, you know, you have to build in the responses, but with uh, recognition of text, they can, you can get, I'm trying to figure out the best ways. I'm learning little tricks. So for instance, to get the bill, the student has to type la cuenta por favor. So if they and if they forgot the comma, it wouldn't recognize it. So it's got to be pretty tight. But I'm working on ways that maybe it just recognizes that the student says cuenta, and that would be enough to give them the bill. You know, we can play around a little bit with the uh, the answers. Yeah, <laughs> only digits. And there's no money in here yet. We, I think you can create your own money, or what we'll do is have it as the XP points. So. The, you'll pay the waitress and she'll actually deduct the XP points from your account that's in the database. So, and it's, let's take a couple, if you have any questions, don't feel free to put those into the uh, chat.
And so we want to create, oh, what I, another thing that I just got done doing is in the shapes and colors garden over by the soccer field, neck, between the soccer field and the pyramid. One, th one complaint that people have about Second Life is that there's no one there. So if you go into a sim, you're the only one in that sim. So you can see here in the plaza, I've uploaded meshes, these mesh characters, to give it feel like there's people here. There are actually people here. Now, these aren't NPCs. These are actually mesh characters that I found on the internet and imported. And they're scripted. So you can script them like regular objects, but they're not going to move around a lot unless I scripted them to move around. NPCs actually move around like avatars, but these guys here are just stagnant meshes. In that shapes and colors garden, I put in meshes of all different people. And if you click on them, they give you a short biography, about 10 sentences. They talk about them. Eugenia helped me write these. And so they tell them about them themselves. And then, yep, I'll get to your question in a sec, Cammy. And so these characters will give you their bio, and then they'll ask you questions about themselves. So for instance, one might say, hi, I'm from Puerto Rico. I study, I study uh, what medicine, I work in the pharmacy. And then afterwards, it'll give a reading comprehension question. I set it up, I ask them in English, so they're not just scanning for words, they actually have to understand what they're saying, and then it's multiple choice, so they have to guess the right answer. I was working with another uh, NPC, and I'll maybe bring those out, where it was actually asking the students questions and then storing their answers in a note card that was then given to the instructor. So for it was asking them, it would say, hola, yo soy de Puerto Rico, de donde eres tú? And then you would write it in the local ch in the chat, and it would capture that into a note card, collect all those answers from the five questions, and then send that note card to the instructor. So the instructor then would get a, a sample of writing or or the person speaking. Good. So the reason, Cami, that I took chose DigiWorlds was they were offering eight dollar regions. So I pay eight dollars a month to host this, and I'm hosting this on my own. My school isn't paying for this, so this is my own host. I want to keep total control. I'd like to, you know, Kenny and I would like to be able to produce a product down the road, and kind of going to Tody, was, I was talking to this too. I work locally. I don't work on this sim. This sim is not, this is a, a, prod, a canned product that I push out to DigiWorlds. I do all my work locally on a local, on an open sim. And then I save it as an OAR file. And I export it and upload it to DigiWorlds. And then they actually push it out. So they're the ones that are hosting it. I'm not hosting it. So I pay them the $8 a month to host that, my ore. But down the road, these ores we can sell to schools, to individuals. And they'll be able to recreate and have their own local version. One big complaint about Second Life for especially secondary schools is all the creepers, all the bad people that are around. You no, know? so they are very afraid of using Second Life, and that's actually hurt Second Life because it hasn't been able to be, accept, be accepted by the under 18 crowd. Well, with OpenSim, a school could run this on their local computers and not be exposed to the internet at all. So it's a total walled garden for them. And that's going to be one of the selling points to high schools and even primary schools. The content is the same. When you're learning the colors in Spanish, there, you know, it's only one set of colors. There's not an adult version and a kid version. So this can, this can work for any age. And so we'll be able to provide those schools with this walled garden. Yes, Sim on a Stick is great. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so it's great, you can do, and then it's like uh, editing a document locally before you publish it. So I do all my editing locally and play around and, and it runs better. And then I upload it when I get when I get a big bulk of content done. And it's been fun, Ilkeni and I are solved working through problems because she puts out the cultural exhibits every month. And if I upload a new version, all of her work will disappear because it's not on my local version. So she works, she does her expositions, she saves them, keeps a copy for herself, so she always has a copy of her work. So it's valuable to her. She's, she's maintaining her own work. So if this whole thing disappeared and I fell off the face of the earth, she would still have her work 
and she would still be able to use her work wherever she wanted. Yes, you can uh, upload IARs. So definitely, I've uploaded all the avatar my, from my local sim. I uploaded into this uh, my avatar here. Yep, that's great. So basically, you don't lose any of your content. Yep, exactly. So Eugenia has all of her content, and it's her content. She owns it, and she can do whatever she wants with it. So I do a big chunk of developing, and then I say, okay, I'm going to upload an OAR, so get ready. And everything you've done is going to disappear. And then I upload, and you know, there's new buildings online, there's new vocabulary, whatever it is I've been working on. And then she comes in and either puts her things back out or puts out the next ex exhibition. So it's been fun working and figuring out those little things, little workarounds to do. So our kind of our goal is to have this space that on DigiWorlds that maybe down the road we would charge people to come and use, or she could bring in her students, students pay her a fee, and then she can bring them in here, or somebody out on the internet who's interested in learning Spanish on their own could come in and have enough support that you could actually do it without an instructor, or maybe we would just be around on occasion that they could talk to us, and uh, or to, to uh, have it as a product to push out as an or for for schools to buy. So that's kind of our goals. I'm trying to think of other examples of projects. You know, we have the train and the, the amusement park to kind of give a little light environment to students to have fun here. Because I think Eugenia mentioned it, a big plus of virtual worlds is just having fun. You know, the students just come in because they want to come in and have fun. So, okay, we're going to take a little study break. Let's go ride the roller coaster for 10 minutes, and then we'll come back. And, and those little side conversations that you have with the students is where you really hook them. You know, they're really hooked then to come in here and study and do more work and figure more things out and keep going. And, and that's like the act of learning. Get them moving around and engaged so it's much much more valuable than a static book, textbook. Because you know, I think really this is a replacement for a textbook. So it's it's got all the content. Oh, I was going to get with the HUD. So the HUD also pops up a, a web browser window. So right when you're working on the classroom vocabulary, you just click on a link on the HUD, and it actually brings up my Quizlets with all that vocabulary. So the student could be reviewing that vocabulary as well as as they're, while they're doing the uh, activity, or for the grammar, imagine a grammar activity when you're working through the grammar activity and you need to consult your notes. So you just click on the HUD and the HUD would pop up those notes so you could take a quick look. Oh yeah, so it's like a textbook, opening it up and then you close it back down and get back to your work and, and figure it out. So the HUD is you know a work in progress that will contain all those little helper things that a student needs, a dictionary, it has the ability to teleport you around. So if you put in TP plus, that brings you back here. TP uh, cafe, it'll take you to the cafe wherever you want to go. All those different places. So it, you know, it's on that level. It, it's a transporter. And then what we can do is limit students' access to places depending on their level. So as we build in the program, so maybe they don't have. They've done the colors, but they haven't done the shapes. So maybe they don't have access to a certain thing where they need to know that shape vocabulary. The great thing about digital learning is we can control their access and their, their level, their progression through the material. So we can, can deter, their, determine their learning and, and pace it ap appropriately. So that's when, you know, all that uh, analytics that we can get from their digital. If they always keep making the same mistake, we could track that and then send them you know, additional practice on those things. The Maya temple was kind of my big overarching idea for a game. So, and the whole idea behind escape, 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 escape is that you're escaping some world that's maybe a zombie apocalypse and you have to do your homework to be able to escape into somewhere was kind of the idea that I had for creating the world known as escape. So that hasn't been totally uh, fleshed out yet, but down the road, the idea will be the students. For my students, over a semester, I have them for a semester in the virtual world, they would come in you know, and say, oh, here's a scenario. You just found out that your world is gonna collapse and you have to learn Spanish to be able to, to save yourself and save everybody else. 
And so maybe you work alone to gain points or you work collaborative, collaboratively. My idea was to kind of have two teams. So players would be playing on one of two teams and they would be working together to solve problems. And then maybe they would be working against the other team to get points or to earn different things. Kind of the more of a gamification side of it with leaderboards and you know you have levels then people within the group would be high level users they would be bringing the low level users up all the advantages of gamification you could easily build into here so my i would just encourage you to come around walk around the issue that we have and we'd appreciate your help on this is we don't have a lot of beta testers so when you try something and you don't and it doesn't work or something you find some error please i am me or Eugenia and let us know where you had an issue and we can come in and, and try to work it out. It always works for me. Thank you, Cami. It always works for me because I, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. But unless you walk around with people and see where they get hung up on it, you don't see where the sticking points are. It, it all makes sense to me, but it doesn't always make sense. Like with the uh, roller coaster. So they didn't see that the instructions are on the wall of the cave to start the roller coaster. Some people have tried it. So a little thing, we'd really appreciate your feedback and, and word of mouth, let people know so that they can come in and give it a try. Right now it's open to the public, anyone can come in and there's information in the kiosk, the welcome kiosk with the rooster walking around. So, yes, please invite anyone you can. Thank you very much for your interest in your time. Sí, también muchas gracias a todos por acompañarnos. Thank you, thank you for all of you to join us, for joining us. Thank you.